makes no difference today how you found your way through this forest of demons and dangers.
in a moment of meditation, let us all realize that we are one with God, one with each other, and one with life. Let us know that whatever our problem, whether it be one of health or finance or family difficulties, that this power can and will work through us right now to bless and to heal. Let us take as the thought for our meditation these words from the prayer of Jesus, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us as each quietly says to himself, because I am one with God, I am one with all people. Because I am one with life, I am one with everything that lives. I feel my union with people and with nature. I feel that I belong to life. I love life. And I enter into the joy of living. I enter into companionship with others, into cooperation with them. And I know that something within me reaches out and embraces the whole world. Something within me blesses everything it touches and brings life and happiness and joy to everyone. Something in me acts as a healing balm, restoring everything to its natural and its native perfection. As I silently listen to the spirit within me, I am born again, born into joy and hope and gladness, born into love and faith and assurance. Silently, I release every negative thought from my mind. I loose it and let it go. And I too pray that they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. So as we take in those words from our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, I just invite you to breathe them into your heart. Breathe in his presence, the oneness the oneness of all that there is, was, and ever will be. And as Dr. Holmes spoke so beautifully, he talked about being born again. So I know as we come together to honor his birth, that Dr. Holmes is indeed born again in each one of our hearts. And we remember, we remember. I invite each person to go into their heart and remember when they first found this teaching of science of mind, to remember how it transformed each one of our lives, to remember that there is this one power, this one infinite presence, and how Dr. Holmes so beautifully articulated it in such a way that it is continues to be brought out into the world. I invite each person to also to go within to see how you are part of continuing this legacy that thanks to the birth of Dr. Ernest Holmes 136 years ago, January 21st, 1887, that each one of us are here today, are here today to give gratitude and celebrate to celebrate this time together. And what is ours to do to continue to bring the teaching further, further afield to reveal a world that works for everyone and peace on earth. So I know that this, this party is an amazing party that we're just filled with joy and gratitude and gratitude for the Science of Mind archives for continuing to preserve this history for each one of us and for generations to come. So moving forward, I know all is beautiful, the technology is beautiful, and it's a joyous, wonderful time. And I invite you to anchor that with me by saying, and so it is. 
Thank you, Kathy, and thank you, Ernest. So good to uh, begin our proceedings tonight with prayer. We got a lot of uh, we got a lot of great stuff going on. One thing I wanted to let everybody know is that we have a silent auction that's happening right now. The link is going up into the chat. So if you'd like to uh, bop into the science of mind silent auction, that we got lots of great prizes. Lots of ministers have uh, donated things. Going to be some fun there. So go ahead and do some shopping. And uh, we'll be running the silent action until seven o'clock Mountain Time. So get your bids in. And then I uh, just wanted to give Kathy an opportunity now to kind of give you an idea of what's going on at the archives, you know, what the contributions from last year have provided, and kind of a lay of the land of how it's looking at the archives now up in Genesee. Go ahead, Kathy. Thank you, Barry. So appreciate it. We've just had a phenomenal year. And as I was thinking back of these three years of the party, the very first year we said, we set the intention of hiring an archivist. And the second year, you got to meet that archivist. And this year, you get to hear updates of what we've um, accomplished this past year at the archives. And as usual, we really do want to thank Reverend Dr. Marilyn Leo. She is the founder of the Science Mind Archives, and it, she's been doing this for like 25 years. She's turning 88 this year, this coming February. So we're really grateful for her continued light. And the archives has been around for 15 years as a nonprofit. So we are a 501c3 nonprofit, and we are sent a separate from Centers for Spiritual Living, but we work together in oneness and collaboration. And what is an archive? You know, maybe some of you are even wondering what is it? Why? Why is that important? And I'd just like you to even think about your history and your family. Think about like your parents, grandparents, great grandparents. Maybe you have some photos of your great grandparents and some stories. Do you, if you can think about them, a lot of times they get old and they're curling up and they really need proper care. And so we are the archives for our spiritual family history. We preserve, protect, and present science and mind history and philosophy for all of us. And it does need special care. We're coming on 100 years, the centennial anniversary of the incorporation of science and mind in 1927. So we're so, so grateful to, for your support and your donations that's supporting our growth and our evolution as well. And um, so you're going to hear more updates. I don't want to give it away, but you'll hear from our archivist, Kim, and our staff. And, and we have a very special guest coming towards the end. Reverend Stephen Rambo is going to bring the birthday boy himself to the party. So stay tuned for that. And with that, I will hand it over to Barry. Well, one of the great things about the archives is uh, the website. And yes. there is just so much information that's being um, uh, transcribed and put onto the website to make it accessible to everybody. And uh, we've got one of our uh, one of our ministers who's been such a big part of moving the website forward. This is Reverend Mark Gilbert. He's going to tell you a little bit about what's going on right now. Hi, are you a supporter of the Science of Mind archives? If so, I'd like to personally thank you for assisting us in our mission of protecting and preserving our new thought and science of mind legacy and assisting us in bringing our resources to the world globally. If you're not yet a supporter, then in this brief video, I'd like to encourage you to either become a subscriber to our website or a member of our Friends of the Archive program. You may know that the archives maintains a facility in Genesee, Colorado, that houses thousands of books, documents, recordings, and artifacts important to the legacy of Science of Mind. Donations of materials each year continue to expand the holdings of the archives. And all of this is open to the public, and we encourage you to come and visit and conduct research into our history and into our philosophy. However, we know many of you cannot make it to our facility, so we're continuously working to expand the availability of archives materials on our website. Already, there are approximately 2,000 items available there for you to download and incorporate into your own studies of the philosophy. And more items are being added each month. 
This includes most copies of the Science of Mind magazine going back to the 1920s, most copies of Creative Thought magazine, and most all the writings of our founder, Ernest Holmes. There's a lot of content on our website that's free to everyone. These include certain research tools where you can download a searchable document containing hundreds of quotes by Dr. Holmes, as well as peek into our database where we're working to update our inventory of all of the works of Ernest. There's a number of Holmes documents in Spanish for free and a new thought mind map, plus much more. However, many of the items do come with a nominal charge. You can bypass most of these charges by becoming a subscriber or friend of the archive, where you'll be able to download up to 20 items each month for free. This available content includes many writings, such as books, radio and talk transcripts, and class material by Ernest Holmes and others important to science of mind. And coming in 2023, we'll be adding many audio recordings of Holmes and others, many that have been rarely heard through the years. I know you're going to want to access all of this exciting material. So how can you become a subscriber or friend of the archive? Well, go to our website at scienceofmindarchives.com and click on the option to join us. There, choose your option to sign up either as an individual or as a community, and then check out the comparison chart, which details the benefits of each option. Then choose among the buttons at the bottom to choose the option that works for you. From there, simply follow the prompts to sign up, and in no time, you'll be downloading content that is going to be valuable to your spiritual studies. And you'll be supporting the archives to continue our important work. Do it today, won't you? Thank you. Thank you, Mark. That was great. And uh, we got some stuff coming up here now. One of the things we like to do during our um, Ernest Holmes birthday party is have a little trivia contest. So um, we're going to be giving away some prizes. I'm not sure. I think we're giving away a car. No, we're giving away an Ernest Holmes reader is what we're doing. So uh, this will be a uh, reader on change by Ernest Holmes that you can download. And um, here's our first question for tonight. And put your answer into the chat and our panel of judges will see who is right and uh, we'll let you know. All right. So you'll see the you'll see the answers come up. First question we have, to whom is Ernest Holmes' book, The Science of Mind, dedicated? To whom is Holmes's book, The Science of Mind, dedicated? That's question number one right there. You can hear the clock ticking right now. And then the second question is, uh, the Science of Mind Institute and Magazine were begun in the year 1927. I think everybody knows that Babe Ruth hit 27 home runs that year. We all know that. But what other adventure of spirit took flight that year besides the science of mind? All right. So there's your second question trivia question for tonight. So uh, while you guys are thinking and scrambling to your Science of Mind textbook, I want to introduce our next musical guest who uh, I heard her sing today and she's just got a beautiful voice and is a great writer and um, is going to be our uh, music director at the conference that's coming up. So um, yeah, here's one of our favorites, Denise Rossier. Hey everybody, it's Denise Rosier, and I am so happy and honored to be here with you to celebrate and wish Ernest Holmes a happy birthday. I also want to take a minute to thank the Science of Mind Archives and the Library Foundation for their amazing work in preserving our history. So I just encourage you to support them and help them in your giving. Um, right now, I'm going to sing a song I wrote called You Are the Light. And the message is really a reminder that we hold all of heaven inside us. The life of us all is God. And so we are reflections. We are revealers of God, the light of the world. It's as simple as that. You are the light, beautiful, powerful, holy, just as you are.
you change dust into gardens, pieces into peace, tears into fountains, chains into release. Doubt into action, vision renewed, perfect creation unfolding in view. You hold on, love heaven inside you, no matter through and if your dreams burn down to ashes you rise again you are the light the light of god the power of prayer lifted up every breath testifies you are the light you hold on love heaven inside you no matter what you go through and if your dreams burn down to ashes rise The power of prayer lifted up every breath, testifies you are the light, you are the light. Hallelujah, 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 you are the light, the light of God, the power of Dust into gardens, pieces into peace. Bless you all. I will see you soon. Wasn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh. Thank you, Denise, so much for joining our party and for sharing that beautiful song for all of us and especially for Dr. Holmes. Now, I have the honor of sharing with you about more about the Science of Mind archives. I'd like to tell you about our staff. So we have amazing staff at the archives. It's a small but mighty crew. I'm executive director for eight years, and Reverend Valerie has been our prosperity manager for seven years now. Melinda Eskridge, she has recently become administrative support, well, I guess two years, but she's been volunteering for like 10 years. Her heart is truly in the archives. 
And right now, I have the honor of introducing our archivist, thanks to all of you, Kim Larmy, and she's going to tell you a bit about the archives. And there's also going to be one other uh, presentation right after hers. So we're going to have Kim, and then afterwards, there's another beautiful song by our own Barry Ebert and Park Peters. Here goes Kim. Hi, I'm Kim Larmy. I'm the archivist and librarian here at Science of Modern Archives and Libraries. Um, I've been here almost two years. I'm getting close. Um, I'm really excited to be here because I'm able to bring out all the treasures in the archives. There are a lot of things that are already, you know, processed and, and put out for the, for the archive and for people to use, but I'm finding all these amazing treasures. One of the things I found that, that is so neat is um, the scripts from the radio shows that Ernest Holmes and Bill Hornaday did on CBS on the West Coast, they actually used to produce the um, radio shows and they were the ones they actually used in their hands. That, 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 that's what's so neat. And there's scribbles on them that they, they were using, you know, waiting their turn to talk during the shows. So we have little drawings on them and, and things that they were, they were sitting there waiting and doing their, their talks. And I, it's just amazing stuff that I find as I go through all the different collections. Our big project this year has been putting together and installing a collection management system, which basically puts all of our items in groups so that when you're looking for something from Ernest Holmes, you can look in a specific area and that tells you where to find anything about Ernest Holmes. It groups everything together. It's like filing, but it's filing digitally. The Heverland Foundation has given us two grants this year to get all of the um, collection management system in place. And we have purchased Past Perfect. We have gotten it in place and we've been able to bring in four interns from different universities across the United States. Uh, one of them was actually in South Korea working for us and the rest have been on, in different places in the United States. They've all been working remotely, doing amazing jobs, um, creating finding aids, which allow people to find out what is in the database and in Past Perfect, and then also ingesting um, items so that there are pictures and images of what's in Past Perfect. The big thing we've been working on is putting photos in place like Bridge Armor, um, the Holmes family and pictures of a Selimar, which everybody loves. And then also we've been putting in um, all of the things that uh, the board minutes, the older board minutes that have been digitized. And these interns have been doing this all remotely, which has been amazing work. And then they go ahead and put in descriptions of these different items. So they're easier to find, which we call metadata. And then put in um, information so that it can all be looked up, this metadata, remotely by anybody. Once this all becomes live, it's not live yet, so don't get too excited yet. We're still working on it. But once it all becomes live, researchers will be able to put in a couple of words and find whatever they need and be able to find these pictures, these images, and then ask us what for what they need. And we can find it for them very easily and we can get it out to people all over the world. One of our fun projects this year is we're updating the website with new descriptions of the books that we have up for, available for people to sell or a review um, and we're having volunteers that are practitioners and they're coming in and looking at the books some of them have very long involved descriptions and so people are coming in and doing new descriptions that are short and concise so they're easy to understand um, and we're adding additional items so people have more to, to review and more to, to buy if they want to buy so we're trying to update the website in general and in little pieces as well so we're working on that as well. We have obviously a lot of projects going on and many more that need to be done, but the website is one of our big projects this year. We're trying to make it more user-friendly and, and easy to use for people in general. This past year, I was asked to be the Holmes Institute librarian and join their ranks. And I'm delighted to be working with the students to help them with their papers and their research and help them learn how to do citations, which are really easy but it's not easy if you don't know what you're doing yet. So I'm their librarian now, and I'm really excited to work with students again. It's been a while, but I'm enjoying it very much.
Hey, it's Barry and Park, and we're always glad to be a part of Ernest Holmes birthday party. And uh, this is a song we love to do because it has a lot of science of mind ideas in it. And we want to thank you, Ernest, for being such a great part of our lives. This is called I Will Step Aside. I have grown weary from all of this try. My soul is still crying for something that's true. I know you can hear me. Sometimes I can feel you. And I know I'm the reason that you're finding it hard to get through. Because I've got my own little stories. And I build them around me like walls. But they just get in the way till I can't hear what you say when you call. So I will step aside, let your love move through me, my heart is open wide, I've been hiding so long, a candle in the darkness, and all along you knew me. Just waiting for the time I'd be still enough to hear your song. Looked for the answers in people and things. I tasted the heartache that loving can bring. I've taken my chances, felt the fire when it touched me. And I know there's still music inside me to make my heart sing. So I'm laying aside my defenses, giving myself to the quest. Because the song that you play when I get out of the way is my best. I will step aside and let your love move through me. My heart is open wide and my spirit is strong. A candle in the darkness and all along you know me. Just waiting for the time I'd be still enough to hear your song. You were just waiting for the time I'd be still enough to hear your song. That was awesome. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Park. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful song. It just I could feel it in my heart. Well, speaking about candles, we were talking about candles in that song. Of a, a uh, special thing that we got going tonight is we have 136 candles available that can be purchased and uh, that will support the archives. And uh, we already have 
several people and centers who have bought candles already for $136. And uh, I think it's a great thing. So we got that coming up. And I know a lot of you are thinking now, sure, this is all great, Barry, but how about some more trivia questions and who won the last ones? So please be patient. So question number one was won by Reverend Sherry Ganon. To whom is the science of mind and spirit dedicated? And it is dedicated to the truth, that truth which frees man from himself and sets him on the pathway of a new experience, which enables him to see through the mist to the eternal and changeless reality. She just answered the truth, but we're going to send her the reader anyways, because we we're limited on time. And I know she knew that. So uh, so there's our first one right there. She gets a car. I mean, a reader. She gets a reader. And then Reverend Steve Kin's father got the second one that. Um, what great other adventure of spirit took flight that year was Charles Lindbergh crossed the Atlantic Ocean in the spirit of St. Louis. So that was 1927 as well. Um, so now we got uh, we got a couple more questions. Question number three is coming up right now. So uh, set your phasers to stun. Here we go. So when the new teaching chapters were coming up, Ernest Holmes would sign the official document to make a center a teaching chapter. So uh, what was the last teaching chapter that he signed on? What was the last one, last teaching chapter? Where was that that Ernest signed on? So that's question number three. Question number four, this is more of a research question since the archives is a research type of place. In what city was the world's largest snowman built? In what city was the world's largest snowman built? So uh, that's question number four. You can put those answers into the uh, chat and we'll let you know who those winners are. And um, Kathy, it looks like we've raised some money so far. Is that true? It's true. We have raised $2,700 so far for the archive. So woohoo! we're really grateful. And with the candles, CSL Reno purchased 10 candles. And so a shout out and gratitude to CSL Reno. Thank you so much. That's great. And I wanted to introduce the next uh, presenters who will be coming on, two incredible friends of the archives. The first is Marilyn Leo. I am a great fan of hers, and the archives wouldn't be here without her. And uh, she does so much to support the teaching, the archives. All of us uh, musicians and ministers are so supported by Marilyn Leo. So it's always a joy to have her as a part of this. And after that, we'll have some words from Dr. Roger Teal, a great mentor of mine and on the archives committee as well, and uh, keeping this thing moving forward because uh, we got great work ahead of us. Here we go with Dr. Marilyn. Hello, everyone, and happy 136th birthday of Ernest Holmes. We just love to celebrate him and all and thank him for all of the wonderful things that he has did throughout his life. And the reason I am here is because my name is Marilyn Leo, and I am the founder of the Science of Mind Archives and Library Foundation. It's a wonderful group of people that are preserving and, and just doing wonderful things to share with the world all that we have, all that we are collecting in the archives. I am so excited about it. Now, in speaking about that, I want to share with you what, what I said in the January Science of Mind magazine. And, um, and so let me just uh, share with you just for a moment. Many thousands of people around the world have found science of mind and share with us how their lives have been changed for the better through these spiritual principles. We preserve our history and make available the words of Ernest Holmes and others and the science of mind teaching. So there will be millions of people in the future who also find the wonders of living life inspired. That is why I support the archives and especially the Curator Society, which is a wonderful group and investments to support the Science of Mind Archives and Library Foundation in years to come. 
Yes, we love to have the today's bills paid, but we're looking at the future and the millions of people that will be affected and have a wonderful life because of these science mind principles. I am so happy to be with you today and happy birthday, Ernest. Greetings, I'm Dr. Roger Teal, Minister Emeritus of Mile High Church, and it's my delight to join in this celebration of the birthday of Dr. Ernest Holmes, the founder of religious science and the science of mind and spirit. I'm told it would be his 136th birthday. It's a joy to support the archives, which are the repository for the works of Dr. Ernest Holmes, uh, a collection of every Science of Mind magazine in digital form, and many, many other resources, including artifacts and furniture, even clothes. And I love that we have this. Now, I want to be clear that my support of the archives is not just about empowering the past, because we are a very now teaching and now and future possibility teaching. And I also feel like a strong foundation that we cherish is the kind of platform, launch pad, from which we can move forward in the future. We draw from the best that has been, but we're not in all, at, in any way, stuck in it. I think it's so wonderful to have this material so readily available, and I applaud all the dedicated personnel and contributors who've, who've made it their mission to make sure that this doesn't just fade away, but that as our movement evolves and grows, it's here as a very ready treasure and a support system. Now, in my many years as a minister, 43 to be exact, in the formal ministry, uh, I, on many occasions, I had to do a lot of deep research to get the material that I wanted. Uh, and it was only uh, until the last several decades that I had that accessible to me through the archives. And then I would use that to find obscure quotes, quotes that I couldn't remember uh, where I had placed, a material that was so useful to me. And that's available to you, it's available to everyone. And I think that's such a beautiful thing to have. The Science of Mind and Spirit is, I believe, a much needed teaching. It's a teaching, as you probably know, of inclusion and oneness. It's a teaching that understands that the mystical roots of the great faith paths have a similarity, a shared essence, or as I think Dr. Holmes called it, a golden cord of truth connecting them, a through line, a golden through line. And the science of mind and spirit articulates this, and in a way that is usable to people. What a precious and powerful thing. Humanity is struggling big time right now, but it's usually as I've seen in my own life and others, it's usually about tripping over our little ideas, tripping out of our obsolete notions, our limiting notions, our destructive notions. So much of the pain that's being endured now is a wake-up call, and that's the positive side. And that's where this teaching and all of our resources need to step in and say, in the midst of our struggle and our suffering, here's what's trying to be birthed out of our crisis is a birthing. I believe that the archives <clears throat> and our wonderful teaching midwives this birth that is happening right now. And so I encourage you to pause and reflect on the gift of this teaching in your life. I, there are no words to express the depth of my gratitude for the science of mind and spirit. Reflect upon that. Reflect on how it would have been had you known this earlier in your life, perhaps when you were an impressionable youth, getting all these messages from the world and from others that you eventually would probably have to overcome. Imagine getting them earlier and building a life upon them, <clears throat> releasing more of your innate magnificence. Reflect upon that. And let's work together to prosper these archives because it's a wonderful energy and a resource at the heart of our global movement. Again, I'm Dr. Roger Teal, and uh, I thank you for your interest, your devotion. Moreover, 
I thank you for shining your light in this world. For remember, you are the light of the world, as the master teacher said. Thank you and many blessings to you. Wow. I sure appreciate Dr. Rogers' um, heartfelt sharing because it really made me reflect back on when I found Science of Mind. And it was at Mile High Church uh, 16, going on 17 years ago. And it just really, it has changed my thinking and changed my life. And that's when I decided to go check out the Science of Mind archives. I heard about it. I'm like, I have to learn more about our history. And gosh, you know, when you say something really strongly into the law, you never know when you'll become executive director. And so watch, watch those thoughts. But I love it. I'm grateful. And I have the great honor of presenting uh, three presenters coming up. Did you know that the Science of Mind Archives has a Spanish translation team? Oh my gosh, it's been such a joy to meet and connect with these enthusiastic, passionate women who are, they're here to translate Science of Mind to get it out even further out into the world. And so you're going to meet Woody, who is going to do a, a, a happy hour with the translation team. And he's a great friend of ours as well. I, right at this moment, one of the, Lily uh, Madera is one on the team and it's her birthday today. And so I want to wish, she has Ernest Holmes birthday. So it's pretty darn cool. So happy birthday, Lily. And so that's our first group of folks. The next one is Ray Davis. Another thing we did this past year is I had an ordination and I had it and um, at Founders Los Angeles, Spirit told me that's where I was supposed to do it seven years before and it was answered prayer. And that's where I met Ray Davis. And he just did such a beautiful job of bringing light and love to the ceremony. And he's bringing it to Ernest Holmes party as well. Just a beautiful singer, so grateful for him. And then finally is Dr. Lloyd Barrett, the voice of God. You know, so I know he has touched so many of our hearts. And so I just invite you to open your heart and just commune with this beautiful soul. And he was actually the uh, minister at my very first service at Mile High Church. So grateful. And so sit back, enjoy. Hola, hola, amigas y amigos, bienvenidos de nuevo a la hora feliz. Hoy estamos de fiesta, pues estamos celebrando el cumpleaños del doctor Ernest Holmes. Y tengo a unas chicas muy especialmente invitadas porque ellas son el equipo de trabajo que se dedican a estar traduciendo los archivos de todo el material del doctor Ernest Holmes. Voy a comenzar con quien tuvo esta gran idea de formar el equipo. Y ella es Ada. Ada, bienvenida. ¿Cómo estás? Contenta y feliz. Gracias por esta invitación. Bueno, como bien dijiste, Guri, mi nombre es Ada de Mitrópolo, soy de Argentina, del sur de Latinoamérica, director escritor, graduada hace poco, y lo que me motiva a leer a Home siempre es volver al amor. Y más allá del desafío enorme es transmitir estas enseñanzas en el idioma español, respetando el, la originalidad del mensaje, la profundidad del mensaje, pero con, un, con una forma idiomática que corresponde al español. Y esto no es un trabajo que se hace solo, se hace en equipo. Me encanta la idea de poder trabajar en equipo y quiero presentarles a quienes eh, me acompañan y hacemos este trabajo en conjunto. Nuestra querida llamada Clary, por favor, ven Clary. Buenas tardes, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Clara, Clara Sánchez, directora espiritual, ah, egresada de nuestra primera generación de L. Y yo estoy en la ciudad de Tijuana, en Baja California, en México. Y mi gusto, porque es un gusto, es un amor el estar aquí, por no perder la esencia de cada uno de estos bellos mensajes. Y también participa con nosotros nuestra querida Marisa Morales. Mari, ven por favor. Hola, hola, buenas tardes con todos. 
me siento feliz, feliz, feliz de estar acá. Mi nombre es Maritza Morales, yo vivo en Lima, Perú, y soy directora espiritual, así como mis compañeras de la primera promoción de ELI. Recuerdo que, que me ofrecí de voluntaria para traducir el cuaderno de trabajo de Más Allá de los Límites, y creo que al, al momento en que Ada nos convoca, yo digo, wow, bien, eso es lo que quiero hacer, porque me encanta, porque quiero eh, que otras personas se beneficien de poder estar más cerca de esta filosofía. Y ahora quiero presentarles a una de ellas, por favor, Lili, ¿estás ahí? Hola, yo soy Lili Madera, vivo en San Diego, California, y me gusta ser parte de este proyecto, puesto que yo lo veo así, como que yo disfruto al estar leyendo, al estar traduciendo, y a la vez lo comparto con otras personas que quieren, quieren o quisieran disfrutar de todo esto, y, y a veces el idioma es un impedimento. Así que lo disfruto. Gracias. Ahora sí, chicas, las voy a invitar a que levanten su copa junto conmigo y digamos... ¡Ah, Happy, Happy birthday, Dr. Holmes. Happy birthday. This is Ray Davis from Los Angeles. I am so grateful to be here to help us all celebrate uh, the birthday of this auspicious, wonderful man whose philosophy I became acquainted with in uh, 2007 when I was, uh, it was suggested that I read this thing called You. What a great book. What an amazing, amazing little book. Uh, that even to this day, I, I hand out to people. My wife and I just hand it out to people uh, who are interested in this philosophy and they say, this is where you start. And this song that I've chosen is called Haven't You Heard and deals exactly with that, uh, helping me to understand my true identity as a complete and perfect emanation of the one. I'd also like to give special thanks and a shout out to the Science of Mind Archives and Library Foundation, that wonderful organization tasked with keeping the legacy of this great man alive uh, for us and for future generations. They are most definitely worthy of our support. So, haven't you heard? Haven't you heard? You're the light lighting up the world. Haven't you heard? Haven't you heard? I know sometimes it's hard for you to clearly see just how you're gonna keep it together. Your obligations and responsibilities, how you gonna meet them ends, how y'all, how y'all, how you gonna make it one more time? Now let's hear the truth of it. You are much, much more than this, haven't you heard? Haven't you heard? You're the light line up the world. Haven't you heard? Haven't you heard? You, there's no darkness. Oh, haven't you heard? Haven't you heard? You're the bread, don't the wine, the word. Haven't you heard? Haven't you heard? You're the light of the universe. I know sometimes it's hard to hold your head up high and show the world you've got it together. You think of things that make you want to run and hide. Who would love you if they knew? Who y'all? Who y'all? Who could you trust to understand? Now let's hear the truth of it. You are loved much more than this, haven't you heard? Haven't you heard? You're the light lighting up the world. Haven't you heard? Haven't you heard? You, there's no darkness. Oh, haven't you heard? Haven't you heard? You're the bread, you're the wine, the word. Haven't you heard? Haven't you heard? 
You're the light of the universe. You're not the things you have done. You're not the words that you said for the heartache that you're going through. Oh, you are the bright of the sun. You are the glow of the moon. And in your presence, the things that seem dark fade away. Oh, haven't you heard? Haven't you heard? You're the light lighting of the world. Haven't you heard? Haven't you heard? In you there's no darkness. Haven't you heard? Haven't you heard? You're the bread, you're the wine the word. Haven't you heard? Haven't you heard? You're the light of the universe. You're the light lighting up the world. Haven't you heard? Haven't you heard? Happy birthday, Dr. Holmes. Happy birthday to you. Indeed. It is a joy to participate in the celebrated birthday, the celebration, the birthday of Dr. Ernest Holmes, as well as promoting the amazing work of the archives designed to enhance and maximize the benefits of these great teachings. As Dr. Ernest Holmes emphasized, there is nothing more tangible than results. He also wrote, we can change our conditions through the use of the mind. Furthermore, he emphasized, we are chemists in the laboratory of the mind. What shall we produce? It is my joy to share that these thoughts, many of his thoughts are applicable in everyday experiences. Here is an example. During my time as a teacher in the inner city, Compton, California and Watts, California, I was attracted to the statement by Dr. Holmes, quote, if we look at beauty long enough, we become more beautiful. In order to implement this thought and to see its applicability, I started taking flowers to the classroom twice per week placing it on students' desk. This was followed by using classical and other music, such as Mozart or Chopin. And then I invited students to adopt a positive word for the day, words such as possibilities, harmony, gracefulness, grandeur, joy, and I invited them to practice the word that they selected for the day. As Dr. Ernest Stone said, again, there is nothing more tangible than results. After engaging students in this pattern for a few weeks, the vice principal of the school came in to observe my teaching strategies. After sitting for a while, he shouted, Mr. Barrett, are you tranquilizing my kids? You see, the words of Ernest Holmes, many of these ideas are practical. They work, they are applicable. And as he said, there is nothing more tangible 
than results. Indeed, I invite all of us to apply these thoughts and concepts to our daily lives. I share the following as one of my favorite thoughts by Dr. Holmes found in the book, This Thing Called You. He wrote, in this piece that holds me so gently, I find warmth and comfort from all alarms and anxieties. It is the peace of God in which I find this warm and comforting presence. I am so conscious of this love and this protection that all sense of fear slips away from me like mist fading in the morning light. I now see good in everything and God manifested in all situations. I offer these thoughts as we celebrate this amazing author and teacher's birthday. May your life reflect the magnificence and the splendor of these teachings. Blessings. Oh, blessings to Dr. Lloyd. Oh my gosh, blessings. What a sweet, amazing soul, still shining his light so brightly in our world, and we're so grateful for him. And just a, a side note for the Spanish translation team, we are, thanks to them, we have 20 free translated items on the Science Mind Archives website. So please check it out. And a big shout out to Ada Demetropoulos. Uh, she's spearheading the team and all of them have such beautiful hearts. They're from around the world. If you notice in the video, we have Maritza from Peru, Clara from Tijuana in Mexico, Lily in California, and Ada is in Argentina. How cool is that? And the archives was able to present at the Convention of the Americas. So stay tuned. If you have any Spanish-speaking folks in your community, connect with them. They're just such beautiful people. And they're, again, bringing science of mind out to the world in amazing ways. And now I have a really a great honor to introduce our next presenter, who really actually needs no introduction, is Dr. Jesse Jennings. He's been such a friend of the Science Mind Archives. When we have any research questions, we send it to him for his incredible wisdom. And there's a number of silent auction items I really invite you to check out from Dr. Jesse. He has his Essential Ernest Holmes book that he has personally autographed. And he also has two books from his private collection. Dr. Grayson was a, steward, uh, was a student of Dr. Holmes and his books reflect timeless message of science and mind. And so he has two of Dr. Grayson's books, Stuart Grayson. And one more, thanks to Centers for Spiritual Living, they've donated the Essential Ernest Holmes, the class, the whole class with Jesse teaching it. So I invite you to check out those silent auction items. You know, and you know, Jesse is a contributor to Science of Mind magazine. He has a number of his own books out. So just open your heart and let's give some nice archive welcome to Jesse Jenny. Good evening, Archives family. Thank you for having me here. It's an honor to be celebrating Ernest Holmes' birthday with you. And uh, I've been asked to say a few words about the archives and why it's important to me. Well, one of the things I can tell you is the first time I ever visited the archives at its golden installation, I told Reverend Kathy Mastroianni, I said, the next time I come back, I'm going to have a bedroll and a hot plate with me and I'm going to camp out here. You're going to have to you're going to have to drag me out of here because of the wealth of information that's present, because of the voices that I hear coming out of these books and off of these shelves and from the display 
of material that was in Ernest and Hazel's home. Um, you know, when CSL ministers meet one another for the first time, uh, the, the typical question we ask is, who was your teacher? And it gives us a bit of insight into the other person and possibly their style or their orientation in the teaching, what they feel is most important. My first teacher was Ben Witter. His first teacher was Ernest Holmes. I can still hear Ben Witter's voice in my head. I can still picture him giving a talk or teaching a class to a table full of students, and I can hear his voice. And the thing that makes chills run up down my spine about that is I realized that while he was doing that, and this is 40, about around 45 years ago, he was hearing Ernest Holmes' voice. He was asking himself, now, how can I best frame this in the way that I was taught? The legacy of these people that we knew, that Dr. Roger knew, that Reverend Lloyd knew, all of us who've been in this in this teaching for a very long time, their leg legacy lives on because of the Science of Mind archives. That's the principal place where this material is stored. It's accessible to each of us now uh, digitally in so many different forms. And it reminds us of this continuity of teaching in which we're participating that we have devoted our entire adult lives to. 20 years from now, 50 years from now, when all of us have moved along, new generations have come forward to offer this material. They'll be able to walk through the, those same stacks and hear their teachers' voices they'll be able to draw from the same cosmic wealth, timeless wealth as we do because of our support for the archives. So I wish Ernest a very happy birthday. I think he's very pleased with where we've taken his teaching, uh, including in directions that he probably didn't anticipate. And uh, I call the whole experience good and very good. And a special shout out to those of you who are gathered in person who are carving up some cake. Thank you so much. Richest blessings, Jesse Jennings. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jesse. What a uh, what a treat to have you be a part of our party here. And I would highly recommend uh, his book, The Essential Ernest Holmes, if you haven't read that yet. And if you get an opportunity to uh, take that class, it's one of, uh, one of my favorites. It was always one of my favorites to teach. And uh, it's just very rich. And I can hear you saying right now, that's all great, Barry, but what about the winners of the trivia questions? So the answer to number three was answered by Diane Bergeron, one of our practitioners. And uh, the last teaching chapter that Ernest Holmes signed on was Mile High Church in Denver, Colorado. So that's that one. And the one that you're all wondering about, where was the largest snowman built? That question was answered by Krista Siraco, one of our virtual practitioners. Largest snowman ever was built in Bethel, Maine, which was the birthplace of Dr. Ernest Holmes. So famous for those two things. So that's, um, they will all be getting the Ernest Holmes reader about change. And we are going through some change right now in the world. And we want to uh, talk to you about our librarian and the people also who are doing this digitizing. A couple of friends of mine, Colleen Stevens and Park Peters. They are up at the archives all the time, doing work, going through the stacks, bringing this stuff to life, getting it onto the website and making it available to so many people in the future. So um, so let's listen. We got, uh, we got banners of the winners here. Are we gonna do that? Have you got that? There you go, right there. Your names are up in lights. Congratulations. And uh, we got our next we got our next videos coming up. Thanks for hanging in here with us. And uh, we're having a good time. And we're raising some money for the archives. We're over $3,000. Keep it coming in. Welcome to the library portion of the Archives and Library. Uh, it is not complete right now. It's still a work in progress. But we do have a rare books room where people will be uh, have access to 
you will be monitored while in there because there are some of those books that are well over 100 years old. We will also have a reference library area to where you could come and reference all of the books, do any research you wanted to do about really any religion you wanted to, to research. Those books you would not be able to check out. But then we will have an additional portion to the library where it would be a lending library. You would be able to take the books out and to keep them for a certain period of time and then return them. Donations to the library, yes, we will be accepting donations. And we would love to have you come and visit. We intend to have an area where there will be books for children, uh, metaphysical books. If you have any of those, donate them. Um, if you have any questions, just give us a call and we would be happy to answer whatever comes up for you. Hello, folks. My name is Park Peters. I'm the guy who is basically responsible for digitizing the audio uh, of Ernest Holmes and eventually others uh, for the Science of Mind archives. I've been running a recording studio now for 44 years. And uh, so the theory is I should know what I'm doing. Uh, basically, the process of digitizing these tapes is to first figure out what the heck we've got. So we open up a box and we thread up a tape and then we start the tape machine. And, you know, if you know Ernest Holmes' voice, you'll know that that's not it. So the box, in fact, on this tape is labeled not Ernest Holmes because it's not him. Uh, basically, I've been working transferring tapes for the archive since 2015. Uh, and if you haven't experienced the archives uh, website, I suggest that you join because there are there's just a treasure trove of material there to behold, uh, audio and written material as well. There's still many, many parts of the archives that, that I don't know anything about. Uh, one of the things I learned about this last year or so is this, which is the Science of Mind textbook in Braille. And... It was transcribed into Braille under the sponsorship of the Braille section, American Association of University Women, Braille Beach, California, in 1965 was when this was transferred. And, and uh, it's the, it's, uh, the uh, let's see, it says right up here at the top, because I just flipped it up, this is volume uh, seven of 14. Uh, it's table of contents. So the Science of Mind textbook is 14 volumes that they're this big. Uh, that's how much bigger Braille is than than uh, conventional text. But uh, so I'm I'm finding stuff that I can use at the archives as well as uh, help people hear of these tapes. And of course, that way I get to listen to them too. So I thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me. And I'm going to stop before my voice gets froggier. The Archives is so blessed to have Colleen and Park on our team and, and bringing these precious uh, archival items out to the world. And hot off the presses, Reverend Mark Gilbert has shared that there are four more records, audios of Ernest Holmes records, and four more audios of Ernest Holmes uh, radio shows on the website today. And so it's constantly being updated. So I just encourage you to check it out. And... I have the honor of introducing our next special guests. So the archives is blessed by an amazing board of directors. They're volunteers and they just share from their hearts and their enthusiasm. It's just amazing. We're so blessed. And we have Reverend Chris Plim, who is the chair of our building location committee. So change happens. And this is an opportunity for the archives. And it's kind of a prayer request for all of us. And I'll let her explain that. And then the other video, which is coming up after that, 
is very special. We have the guest of honor, Dr. Ernest Holmes, being interviewed by Reverend Stephen Rambo. Reverend Stephen was on our board of directors in the past, and he's so creative. And so he created something to be engaging, to, to really learn what Ernest Holmes thought. This is a very small snip of this video he created. And without further ado, Reverend Chris Plum. Hello, I'm Reverend Chris Plum, and I am welcoming you to the expansion requirements for the archives. Um, as you have probably heard, we are have several major efforts, efforts going on with the archives right now. One of them is the major, they all fall back into one main topic, expansion. We are expanding both our collections, uh, physical collections. To do that, we have to expand our physical space. And we are also expanding in the technology world. So I'm going to briefly just show you some of the um, uh, location and space conundrums that we have. If you see behind me and even in front of me, we have stacks of materials that are coming in from all over. We have many uh, ministers, ministers' families, uh, people who knew homes, etc. Their collections are starting to come into the archives at this time. We do not, at this point in time, even have the room to unbox them. I think you can get that general picture from what you're looking at around here. So we recognized, yeah, actually about a year ago, more than that, that we were going to need expansion space. Uh, about six months ago, um, CSL told us that they would be uh, looking for the opportunity to sell the building that we are currently in and that CSL is in. So that led more credence to, hmm, how much space do we actually need? We are currently in about 3,000 square feet of space. We have estimated just for the next five years, we can easily grow to 6,000 square feet. We are doing lots of things to um, make sure that we are collecting the right types of information, uh, eliminating duplicates if we have them, uh, digitizing where we can, and there's other people that will be in the party tonight that will talk about all the details of all that stuff. So we're trying to also look at right now what can we store that has already been digitized? But even as I look around the collections we have today that have not, the boxes haven't even been opened. I know there's people in the field that are also working on collections that they're, they have uh, received from uh, minister estates. Uh, for instance, Marilyn Leo is working with the J. Scott Neal collection. She is doing that off site and looking through things like we don't need his magazines, we have those. We don't need certain books, we have those. Uh, but then there's just invaluable treasures that J. Scott Neal collected over the years that we do want to put in the archives. Right now, we don't even have a place to put them. There's no floor space for them. So we're going to be, as we look for new space and CSL looks for new space, we're going to be looking for what kind of space do we actually need? How are we going to expand? How are we going to move? I do want to share with, with the viewers, you, that um, CSL has done a wonderful job of supporting the archives to date. They give us uh, all the space that we are currently in. And as we search for new space, CSL is taking the lead on looking for that new space and looking for space that will meet their requirements as well as our requirements. So what we are asking for today is we're more looking for a continuance for donations to continue our operating expenses. Um, and boy, do we thank CSL for what they're contributing. Imagine that you are a researcher in the future and you want to go back and look for materials about how new thought affected the culture. Most of you know that, gosh, new thought is everywhere in the culture right now. We are like the Oprahs. We are like the, we were like the John, John or Wayne Dwyers. We, we, I mean, there's so many people that have um, espoused what we believe in and taught it. In the future, people are going to research. How did that all happen? How did it affect culture? Where did it show up in 
the way of life globally, for we are a global archive. So with all that, I'm giving you lots of information. I just want to welcome you. I want to ask for your continued support and know that we are, we're delighted that you are with us today. Thank you. Today on This Thing Called Life, a Zoom conversation with Dr. Ernest Holmes. Dr. Ernest Holmes, founder of the Science of Mind, Dean of the Institute of Religious Science. I could talk to him for hours, but what I want to talk to him about for today is a little bit about this thing he loves to say, that there is a power for good in the universe and we can use it. Did you ever stop to think you, you live with yourself most of the time? No matter how many there are whom you love, it is yourself that you live with all the time. It is yourself you're going to have to learn to be a good friend to. There is one who is a friend to all of us. And yet all too often, we're not that friend to ourselves that spirit is to us, that we, we in our doubt, we question our value, our worth. And, and let us not say, am I good enough to use this power? Why, of course, we are. The rain falls on us, doesn't it? And the sun shines for us, and the wind blows for us. There is no God who denies anyone anything that is good and right. So using the faith we have and believing in the power greater than we are, we sort of begin to expect things to happen. It would be a very interesting thing, even if it were only a game we were playing. How fascinating. How wonderful to believe that out of that which up until now, perhaps we had thought was a wistful wish, a wishful dream, something that couldn't quite be true. Out of all of this, we have longed for and we have yearned for and we have wanted. All that we can, all that we dreamed of, all we hope for, as long as we can believe as, as long as it's as we believe. Isn't it terrific? Right now. Maybe those dreams can come true. Right now, maybe the desire of our hearts is already met in some divine intelligence that knows the beginning from the end, just waiting for our cooperation. Nice. That was awesome. That was awesome. See, bringing, rebirthing Ernest Holmes, celebrating his birth, bringing him to life, thanks to the Science Mind Archives and Reverend Stephen Rambo. So what would a party be without singing happy birthday, right? So we're going to do something just a little different this time. We have our friends from the Convention of the Americas, led by Dr. Reverend Dr. Rebecca Pena, singing Happy Birthday in Spanish. Muy buenos días. Estamos aquí en la Convención de las Américas en Chapala, nuestro último día en el brunch. Y queremos recordar a nuestro amado Ernest Holmes y cantarle las mañanitas. Ya sabemos que nació en enero, pero aquí lo vamos a celebrar y le vamos a cantar para su... Uh, su Celebración de cumpleaños, las mañanitas. Así que, adelante. Una,
Those guys are having entirely too much fun right there. They really are. So, so uh, we're going to have a chance to, to uh, hear a little happy birthday from the what we call the Archives Choir. This is a group that was assembled by Park Peters and directed by him. And uh, they're going to put a little happy birthday together. And we'd invite you to sing along at home. It's a great opportunity because we won't hear you anyways. So belt it out. Go full tilt. Here we go. The Archives Choir. Four. This is Park and the Arquettes. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ernest. Happy birthday to you. Yay! Stunning. That was beautiful. Brought a tear to my eye right there. That was great. And Ernest looked great and very patient with what was going on there as well. So we want to thank you all for joining us tonight. We had a great time. I want to thank everyone who's contributed. I want to remind you that the auction stays open until 7 o'clock. Scienceofmindarchives.com is the place where all this information is heading. And uh, the archives is just uh, happy to be Happy to be here and doing this work. So if there's a way that you can contribute to be a friend of the archives, to buy a candle, we would greatly appreciate it. And we love getting to do this work. And we so much thank all the people who uh, who joined us here tonight. Also want to mention that Mary Beth Spear also got uh, the answer to question number four right about Bethel, Maine being the place of the world's largest snowman. So she will receive a car or an Ernest Holmes reader as well. And so. Um, Thank you all for playing along and being here. And um, I'm going to turn it back to Kathy to close it out. But thank you for your participation with the archives, keeping science of mind and alive in the world. We're just getting going, folks. Thank you so much, Barry. Again, it's been a joy for year three to have you co-host this wonderful party, because I know this has meant a lot to you, this teaching in the archives. I'm grateful, grateful for you. You're welcome. And also, um, I'd like to thank our committee that we, we've been working. Barry's been on the committee. We've been doing this for eight months at least. We've been working at it. So we're, we're really grateful for all those who participated. I think Diego might have a little, there we go. Actually, that's the archive staff, and we'd love them. So we absolutely thank Keep Why don't you just keep clicking through, Diego? That'd be awesome. Yes, these are our silent auction donors. And so again, as Barry said, it's open until seven. Check it out, great items. And then the archives board of directors and our board of governors, so, so grateful. You know, Dr. Marilyn is our founder and emeritus board member and Dr. Jim Van Cleve, president, Reverend Steve Yarbrough, vice president, Reverend Dr. Deborah Gordon, treasurer, Reverend Chris Plum, secretary, Reverend Dr. Christina Collins, Reverend Mark Gilbert and Reverend Dr. Martha Quintana. Oh my God, so blessed. The archives has a brand new lunch and learn, thanks to Dr. Martha. And it's on the third Thursdays of the month. It's just it's truly at lunchtime, at least mountain time, it's at noon. We had 80 folks show up at this one we had this past Thursday. It, you hear Ernest Holmes' voice and then there's great discussion and questions. It was very powerful. So join us for our next one. And um, there we go, our board, the committee. Love our committee, I'm so grateful. We have behind the scenes in the chat today, we have Christine Betts, who has just done so much to put things on for a silent auction. She's been in the chat. She stepped up to the plate to do some behind the scenes. And we've been doing the party together for eight years. And so she is a party animal and we're grateful for her enthusiasm to celebrate Ernest. Sandra Ray, Oh my gosh, what a beautiful light. She's just wherever she can, she says yes, and she helps out. Park Peters and Chris Plim, Reverend Chris Plim has been our um, the our fearless leader here of the, the committee this year, and she has just kept us task-oriented and moving forward. And, and uh, so grateful, grateful. It takes all of us, again, Diego and New Thought Media Network, 
um, go to the archives website and at the very top, sign up for our e-newsletter. That's how you're going to keep informed of all the happenings here. As, as you could tell from tonight, there's a lot going on at the archives. And there's also a sign up for Facebook. Check us out on Facebook as we keep populating that with the new items and new things. And just like us on Facebook. It's fun to do because Facebook is fun. I like it. It's fun. So, and silent auctions open. I think we can say that a few more times. Great items, and we're grateful to all the donors, especially you. This party wouldn't be anything if it mm -hmm. wasn't for you. So whenever you watch this, thank you. Just feel from our heart that we're grateful for your support, your interest in the archives. And the Spanish translation team is going to take this entire video and make the entire thing available in Spanish. And that will be available as soon as possible. And it'll be on the archives website. I think we did it, Barry. I think we did it too. I wanted to remind you to uh, uh, check out to pay your pledges before you leave the uh, lobby today. And I want to thank you all for your support. It's been a real joy to be with you. I want to thank all of our presenters, all of our musicians and ministers who pitched in to keep this thing going. And uh, yeah, it's exciting. So thank you, Kathy, for your work and for uh, everybody who, who makes this thing happen. And we got uh, we got great work to do. Yes, we do. Thank you. All right. Happy birthday, Ernest. Good night. Good night. It makes no difference today how you found your way through this forest of demons and dangers. All the roads that you travel, the ships that you sail in the circle, you're no longer a stranger. We've arrived at this clearing from every direction. We were drawn by the sound of drums to a fire in the darkness, a light on the road, and a voice that simply said, Come. Please come, you are held in the hands of spirit, lifted on the strong arms of love, and your soul has a song, can you hear it?